If the, if the Minister of Labour who's just taken her seat was so proud of the effective protections that come from the good faith provisions in the Act, why was it that yesterday she refused to acknowledge in this House that under this law an employee can be fired without any reason being given, will not know the reason that they are fired, may have given up a prior job to take the new one, but can be fired without any reason being given up to 90 days. She wouldn't admit that, not because she didn't know it, but because she knows that it's not appealing to New Zealanders who know that that is just not fair. That same minister is the Minister of Conservation. The controversies of this week, you would have expected there would have been some defence of her performance or the government's performance in respect of mining and national parks. But despite the fact that that has been such a terrible, terrible mistake on the part of the government, the Minister of Conservation did not once acknowledge her role, did not once to try to defend her conduct, and did not try to defend the government position. That is just not good enough. Mr Speaker, weak beyond belief. Mr Speaker, I think the most serious aspect of this debate on mining that's been exposed by the opposition in the second stage actually is the flow-on analysis of what's missing in the government's policy. It was always a mistake to suggest mining in national parks. It was always a mistake. Uh, at the time, uh, you know, at the last election, Jerry Brownlee was always, already on record as saying that he believed coal to be sexy. In fact, he had, this, he had a, 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 um, a, a video blog on his website, which he entitled, he himself entitled, Sexy Coal Brownlee. And I would have thought that would be a bit of a warning to the members of the national government that they should take, keep an eye on him, because given that, given that actually the burning of coal is responsible for about half of the greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels in the world, actually the world doesn't want a lot more of the burning of coal, Mr Brownlee. It's not sexy. It's not the way forward for the New Zealand economy. But against that background, the national government let him go out last year and say, hey, look, we're going to catch up to Australia by mining our national parks. This was going to cause a step change in the New Zealand economy. Well, for a start, it was never going to cause a step change in the New Zealand economy. The difference between New Zealand's wealth and Australia in income terms, only about 10% of that difference arises from mining. So he had no answer for the other 90% anyway, but now he's abandoned the 10% that he thought he had a cure for. And today at question time, I thought it was quite illuminating. Where's his plan now that he's bungled his mining uh, way to the future? Where's his plan? There never has been a plan, Mr Cosgrove. You're quite right. There is no alternative. We asked, he said, oh, well, if you ask me some other questions, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. So I said, I put one of the other Prime Minister's other big ideas. This is how some, somehow New Zealand's going to become a financial services hub for the world. And I said... What papers have you taken to Cabinet about that? Uh, none. 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 So, you know, as John Key hops from cloud to cloud, you know, cycle way, nine-day fortnight, mining national parks, financial services hub, let's build broadband on Chinese money, you know, one idea after another, none of them, not one of them has come to fruition. Not one of them has stacked up in any significant way. So the underlying question here that I ask this parliament to consider is what's happened to this promise that the national government was elected upon of catching up with Australia? Now, I asked, I asked Jerry Brownlee at Select Committee the other day, I said, well, how are we going to judge how you're doing along this? What are the targets that you've set? What are your objectives? And he said, oh, we haven't got any. <laughs> He actually admitted that they hadn't got any other than their ambition to get there by 2025. 2025 is 15 years away. Look, even in the worst nightmare, even people that go along to horror movies like Nightmare on Elm Street, in their worst dreams do not think that the national government is still going to be in power in 2025. So how are they to be held to account for whether they meet their ambition their ambition of catching up to Australia by 2000. Plainly, they've got no plan, they've got no targets, they should be held to account. The Honourable Dr Wayne May.